trying to understand how you got a million dollars and you're out here thinking about murdering people. You know what I mean? Now, a lot of times to get to that bag, a lot of weird stuff has to happen. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and take a look at this, man. Let's see what the fellows are giving us today, all right? Make sure if you guys haven't already subscribed, man, you guys are missing out, bro. Chip and Falk, Cal Freezy give the greatest vibes. Get your ass in here, okay? Let's go ahead and check out this video, man. Let's get it. Ah -ha -ha. Oh, man, I've had a really, really rough time. I was, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, I, like, it might be too much information for you here, Chip, but I honestly was stuck on the toilet for absolutely ages. My stomach was moving nuts. Uh, well, that's no worries. Shit happens. Too right. Anyway, what I do have to do today, my rookie, Robert. Rookie, don't disrespect me like that, Chip. You, you know me? we've been doing this for 25 years in this business. There's no rookie about this. We're senior execs. You'll always be my rookie. Robert Allen Durst. Breaking news tonight Ooh. in the murder trial of multi-millionaire real estate heir Robert Durst. Oh, this is obvious. <laughs> this is easy, bro. Fucking Voldemort? Oh my God. Durst. Robert Durst. We're Robert Durst. Robert Durst. Mm -hmm. Robert Durst is behind bars in New Orleans, accused of murdering a woman in Los Angeles more than 14 years ago. That's too easy. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. No arms, no legs, just just the torso. She said to me, Coberta, promise me if something happens, you'll check it out and free Bobby. And I What do you do with the hands? And the arms? And the head. Hold up, bro. People gotta walk people are wildin'. Just said Cassie, of course. Robert Durst was confessing to three murders, and could the list be even longer? As yet another cold case began heating up just two days ago. Born on April 12th, 1943, a convicted murderer and possible serial killer, and he was the son of Seymour Durst, who was a New York real estate magnate. Right. Yeah, which means he had a lot of money. He had peas in the bank. We had bread here. We're talking cash. But he was killing cash women? money. Yep. And before we start on today's case, we must remind you that The Fellas Mysteries is now available on all audio platforms. So Spotify, Apple, you want to hit it up? The link will be in the description. Follow us on there. We'd greatly appreciate it. Now, Robert is actually very well known for three particular things, right? His wife going missing in 1982. Her name, Kathleen. Kathleen, have you, ever, have you ever met someone our age called Kathleen? No, that's not generation that, name. That is. A lot of times, it's like people with those names. Also, what was it? What is it? Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Like people with like the name Paige or like other weird names like that. Like people who have like 40-year-old names, they're always, 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 always like they were born at 30. You know what I mean? Like they were never young. They were born at 30 and that was it. Not only that. Paul. Yeah, Paul. Gary. Yeah. But his longtime <laughs> friend being murdered in 2000, his longtime friend's name is Susan Berman. Third and finally, the killing of his neighbor in 2001, mm -hmm. Morris Black. Yep, Morris Black. I understand the neighbor thing. I can understand people getting mad at their neighbor, but hold up, let's get deeper. As always, guys, with serial killers, we got to take it way back to the childhood. You guys already know messed up stuff or something happened in their childhood have we had a serial killer case yet where something hasn't gone a little bit weird in their childhood i don't think no, so. no not a chance i don't think so now <clears throat> robert's mother actually died on um for, she, she fell off a roof would you believe it or not so it's not anything particularly nah he pushed her he probably pushed her or he or he moved the ladder when she went and got on the roof i don't believe it Look at this little demon. You know, gruesome. What was she doing on the roof? I don't know. Nobody knows what she was doing on the roof. Maybe she was fixing something. But um, Robert actually said that his dad at the time took him over to the roof to actually watch his mother die, fall off it. But his brother, right, Robert's brother said, my dad never did that. That's not what happened at all. That's completely fabricated. Um, so, yeah, a bit of a weird one um, from Robert, the, the serial killer there. Uh -huh. But, uh, yeah, anyways, regardless of, uh, of that side of the story, uh, his mum did die at an early age, which obviously to any oh my God. is causing some form of trauma. No it's it's not a nice experience. No. Speaking of the brother, 
Douglas, um, him and Robert, brothers, uh, both ended up having to go to sibling rivalry Ooh. counseling. I didn't, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I didn't even know that was a thing. But you just gotta scrap it out with your siblings. Yeah. A couple of left ducks, couple of Sibling rival? What kind of counseling? Yo, white people gotta calm down, bro. Y'all gotta calm down. What? Sibling rivalry? Counseling? Right, Ox. Because when you're when you're young, the power's not there. You're not gonna break. Yeah, it's, it's never gonna be that deep when, when you're a sibling. Yeah. But obviously, the rivalry was clearly strong enough to the point where they ended up getting counseling. Not only that, let's remember that both of them come, came from a wealthy family. So getting something like counseling was obviously an option to the parents. They, they probably mm -hmm. thought, you know what, this is pissing me off more than anything. Let's have a counselor deal with them rather than just let we them deal with them. That's I mean, the amount of WWE moves I practice on my sister, I, I think if my parents had the money, they might have sent me to yeah. counseling. I was having to. Yo, that's crazy because my sister used to kick my ass, dude. So was I a hoe? Ho Chat, I think I was a hoe, bro. Oh my god. She was older, though. So it like, oh my god. WWE wow. is practiced on me. <laughs> really? yep. By who? By my brother. Really? Did, did you, you never retaliate? You never hit him with a little RKO or nothing? Too strong for me. Really? Take out a couple yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. But it shows you to the man you are today, Chip. Yes. The counselor, through these sessions, actually stated that Robert had personality decomposition and possibly even schizophrenia. His classmates also said that he was a bit of a loner. Now that's quite a statement to say is that he possibly even has schizophrenia at the age of 10. This was when Robert was only 10 years old. To come out with a statement like that is pretty nuts. Um, but nothing was really done about it. Now Robert, he was a smart fellow. He. <laughs> I wonder if they've talked about Chip staring into the camera. Like I wonder if they've had this conversation. They've had to, right? Somebody's had to have said something. Economics went on to enroll uh, in a doctoral program at UCLA, but actually withdrew and went back to New York in 1969. It's a relatively smart man, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't take that away from him, and especially if he ended up wanting to become a doctor. You know, he got into the program, but ended up sacking it off anyways. Yeah. Uh, but when he went back to New York, obviously his so his family Durst, the Durst family was very heavy in real estate, and they sort of expected Durst. Uh, Robert Durst to go back to New York and just get involved in the business, get the family business, which was real estate. He went back in and they just decided, look, Robert, I'm not sure this is the job for you. They decided, the shareholders thought, you know what? Nah, he's not this handling, he's doing a bunch of weird stuff. Decided you're not going to work at, for this family anymore. With Robert being taken out of the, the picture frame of, mm -hmm. the, of, of Durst, uh, the Durst company, it actually caused quite a lot of friction between the family and Robert himself. Robert thought, hey, I'm entitled to this, right? I'm entitled to the fortune, uh, but good news, well, I guess good news, they ended up settling and uh, Robert was actually bought out of the family trust for 65 million That's US red. dollars in 2006. Hey, so he got that 65 mil. He got, he, he did, he got the bag in the end. He ain't playing, inflation as well. So Oh my God! A little bit more today. Yeah, well, oh, I've I, done I reckon, the numbers. No, you, what no. no, you haven't. You yeah. have not done the numbers, Chip. Let's let's not cap on this show. This show is straight. I've facts. done the numbers. And what numbers did you get, Chip? More than sixty-five million. Right. Okay. Thanks for that. Let's talk about how he actually met his wife, Kathleen McCormack Durst. Okay, so they my met in nineteen seventy-one. She was a dental hygienist. After two dates, he has invited her to share his home in Vermont. So essentially move in. Two days, by the way. We Two days? Quick, fast out here. However, Robert's father convinced Robert to move back to New York. I've always been like weirded out on people who get this close to people that fast. Like it's always been weird to me, but it's always been weird to me, yet I'm that guy. Like I'm that guy who like falls in love in like two messages. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's me for sure, but it's still weird. New York to work <laughs> in the Durst organization. Uh, obviously, they then move to Manhattan and they get married in April 1973. She was a student in her final year uh, college, Albert Einstein. Love you, Dangles. Oh, so that's pretty, that sounds pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it's a college of medicine. And she was only a couple of months away from being a pediatrician, obviously okay. a qualified pediatrician, but then disappeared. 
straight up the face of the map. She was last seen on the evening of January 31st, 1982. She appeared at a dinner party thrown by a friend. She was wearing red sweatpants, which was seen as a bit out of the ordinary for her. Maybe she dresses nice occasionally yeah. most of the time. I mean, you would think at a dinner party, you wouldn't really be wearing sweatpants. No, so and you would that think that they would have been. Man. The, the spotty senses were tingling. They're like, yo, yeah. who's this? Yeah. Where's yeah. the guy at that you moved in with? Upset anyway, so obviously things yeah. are off. Um, and then she actually received a phone call from her husband, Robert, and went back to the house in New York. For the first time in Fellas Mysteries History. Oh, oh, that actually. Mysteries was. Histories. Damn, is that Eminem? No, it's not. It's Cal. What's going on? It's another white bloke. Thank. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anyways, guys, today's video is sponsored by Curve. Now, you guys oh, might have seen on our shit. podcast, we've been picking Curve up. We both have a Curve card ourselves, 100%. and they have been absolutely amazing to us. And I'll be honest with you guys, this mysteries is so expensive to run. We've been running it out of our back pocket, so we can't thank Curve enough for coming mm -hmm. through and helping us out. Chip, tell them the, that story about the time you went on the date and you got away with uh, that thing. Let me throw you back. Yeah. Single days. Mm. I walk into the club, restaurant, bank. I sit down. I'm enjoying myself. I okay. go to pay for the meal. It's mm -hmm. costing me a bit. I won't care. I go to pay. I use my curve card. Boom. It, it declines. Now, it doesn't decline in that moment, but it did use my secondary backup card instead. So that's called anti-embarrassment mode. So what happened is- Oh, that's hilarious. Usual, yeah. I checked my Curve app afterwards and I saw that it, it used that feature, which means my first card- Automatic. Declined. It's automatic. The girl never knew. I'm chilling. You were vibing and, and the day- That's actually hilarious that that's like a real feature. But I mean, it's a really big thing. I feel like a lot of people like, a lot of stuff happens to debit cards and stuff like that. But I feel like a lot of people are very, very, very like, you know what I'm saying? Not, what's the word? Um self-conscious and stuff like that when when stuff like that happens like i've even caught myself like staring at the like little uh debit machine like oh man like i really hope that whole uh you know what i'm saying goes through even though i know i have the money it's just like oh shit i hope that bitch don't get canceled you know what i mean like i don't know or like getting gas like i remember uh like back in the day bro like before i joined the military when i was still in high school and stuff and i would go get gas and like the gas place would like not take my card and say if I was like with a female or something and they wouldn't let you like pull up and pump gas immediately, you had to like go inside to see a tenant. And that usually meant like you didn't have enough, you didn't have at least a hundred dollars on your card for them to hold as the gas. And that was already like, oh damn, now she know I ain't really got it. You know what I'm saying? Even though nigga, I'm in high school, like of course I ain't got no money. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But oh man, I oh that used to make me so self-conscious, bro. Like so self-conscious. To the point where like I legitimately I always kept cash on me. And I found myself always paying with cash whenever I was with females, you know? It went smooth. Yeah, you could say. Well, let's, yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> not only that, guys, but they're actually giving 1% cash back for 30 days. So literally for your purchases throughout the 30 days, you will get 1% cash back, which is fantastic. Amazing. Not only that, but my favorite thing about the promotion they're doing is they're giving away a free fiver to anybody that signs up using our link. If you're watching on YouTube, the link down below. If you're just Whole listening dollars Spotify, though? Apple Podcast, whatever it is. On hey, y'all better go get your money. It's curve.com forward slash spooky. That is absolutely majestic. That is phenomenal. That's, the, be that's the best referral code I've ever Ever. Um, and what you have to do is you get your card, you verify your card, and then you have to make a purchase. Your first. Yeah, it's crazy, Altoid. My dad knows all the last four digits and all of his account numbers, all by heart. The last four digits, expiration date with the CV or whatever all of those numbers for every one of his cards he knows all of it like when he's on the phone talking to the bank people like he'll just be like uh yeah three four nine blah 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 yeah that's the card i'm calling about i need to look at it and they'll be like no we need your other card he's like which card do you need he's like are you talking about the boa the blah 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 they'll be like oh i need four four nine zero blah 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 those are the last four uh and he'll go with the expiration i'm like what how how do you know this? Purchase, which can be even just one P, mm -hmm. and you'll get your free fiver. Guys, we at the fellas don't know how to explain. We're giving you a free fiver for watching the fellas. And you'll be getting do amazing it. benefits because the curve card is really good. Myself <laughs> and Cal both have a curve card. Way better. That's his, that is his hobby, Jack. His hobby is making sure that the, is like, he even shares his spreadsheets like with his friends and shit. Like he'll like, hey guys, this is how you should be saving. Like this is the best way. And he has like these spreadsheets that he's been working on literally since like Microsoft Office 2002. Like literally, he's, he is crazy. Like he has like this spreadsheet that like it, it updates on its own. And he like hired this guy to like write like a little, uh, 
algorithm for him so that whatever he puts in like certain digits like certain things populate and stuff it's crazy it, it, it's honestly insane it makes no sense but he, be, he that's why like they don't really use an account or anything he just runs all that shit himself that is literally his hobby so get on it enjoy it don't say we don't help you guys out that's curve.com forward slash spooky spooky robert durst man hey big ups to the fellas man a lot of you guys know i've been reacting to the fellas since it came out but this is literally like the first one man they definitely definitely deserve some sponsorships here in the future so make sure you guys at, at minimum you know what i'm saying just go click the link play around with it you feel me you know what i'm saying just just so the boys can continuously get that support okay because these shits are i love them okay Let's get it. He, he was in a bit of a pickle here because unfortunately for him, he was actually caught sort of giving two different stories or different variations of the stories to the police. No and idea. he claimed that you, he just did that because he wanted them to go away. So he was saying what he thought the police wanted to hear to just get rid of them. Yep. Don't give me any more hassle. Mm -hmm. And so there were just a lot of different stories on how he thought the night went and what he, how he said the night went. Does that make sense? Uh, so the, the timeline didn't really match up and things were looking a little bit sus. Kathleen made plans to meet her friend Najami, who was also at that dinner party uh, at some point later in that week. Uh, now she failed to show up and at that point Najami actually called the police and said, yo, my friend Kathleen, she's not here. She'd yep. be missing for a few days. Um, and at that point also, I hate well, how you have to wait a couple days before you can report, report, bro. Well. I hate but that. He did leave it quite Like, I know my friend, dog. Maybe, I know they'd be home right how now. How long would you leave it, Chip, till you, you file a missing... Like, it, it, let's Next say you, day, bro. Texting me, how long are you giving it for me to reply? A week. One whole week, really? Yep. And even if you message other people and they're like, have you seen Cal? Have you seen Cal? And everyone's like, no. You're giving me an entire week, Chip. I'm like shave a couple days off if nobody else can get all of you. So you give me five days. Chip, if nobody has seen or heard from you in three days, I, I, I'm doing three days for you, bro. I like to go off the radar, you know what I'm like. You, That's you actually crazy, bro. That's crazy. I mean, if it was Adam, I'd probably just have to fucking... I'd probably have to wait a month because that nigga just acts like he's never on his phone for some reason. Even though every time I see this nigga, he's on his phone. Makes no sense. But... Fuck, I'm not calling nobody. I'm like, hey, fuck it. He'll be all right. <laughs> I don't know. Once. No. But that, that's for an, that's maybe a story for the podcast. I just do that, you know. The doorman at the building in which she shared the apartment with Robert actually claims that he saw her, or at least he saw the back of her, uh -huh. uh, out on February the 1st, which was the day after everyone else had officially last seen her. No cap, uh, dangle. But it's important to note that the doorman did actually say himself that he can't be 100% sure that was that was her because he did only see the back of her. Uh -huh. Three weeks after she was reported missing, mm -hmm. guess what, Chip? What? We, we, got some, we got some big news. The superintendent found her possessions, Kathleen's possessions, in the building's trash compactor. Now Ooh. that's got to be racist. What? Your dead wife? He already gave her shit away? That's kind of crazy. Raising some red flags. Why are her possessions being chucked away? It's only yeah. been three weeks. Surely Robert doesn't think that she's that's dead a, and getting rid of everything. That's a rocky area. You gotta burn that stuff. Burn it. I mean, I just. Uh, how about you just don't throw it away? You burn it or bury it. It makes it seem like maybe Robert Durst was angry at her for something, chopped all her stuff away, and then. Yeah. Killed her. Yeah, and Kathleen had actually been to the Bronx. Bruises. Three weeks before her di uh, disappearance, she had facial bruises, and she had admitted to a friend that Durst had beat her, which mm. is, uh, yeah. But, but, she, but she didn't press charges. She did not press charges. Uh, she'd asked Durst for a $250,000 divorce settlement. She was trying to get a little bit of that bread. Oh, hoes, man. Fucking hoes, man. God damn it. So this nigga's beating your ass and she trying to get paid? She trying to get paid? This dude is beating the shit out of her and she trying to get some money? Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, get away, get your life. Uh, fuck, man. This is crazy. Uh, instead, does cancel. Bro, I'll never understand it. I'll never understand dudes that beat women. I don't even understand. I can, I can, I can like barely yell at females, bro. Like I can like, like actual anger. Like I can emotionally yell at a female. You know what I mean? Like if I'm like, if, I, if we're like debating about something or if I like care about some shit and she's joking too much, I'm like, bitch, what? You know what I mean? But the fact that you have like the, the, 
like that thing in your body that allows you to like raise up your head like to raise your hand to a female like that's just that is insane to me bro every every dude that does that needs to be murdered like you deserve to die that's how i feel sold to his <laughs> wife's credit card that's removed crazy. her name from the joint bank account and refused to pay her medical school bills damn so this she, is getting sour he cut the line yeah, yeah he did. The, the the money line is gone it the is. money tree is no more yeah, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars is is a lot of money, but we have to remember that Robert Durst's family was very wealthy. So yeah. I'm not quite sure. Is that, that a lot in the grand scheme of how much she's worth? I think it's more so. She's asking for that. It sounds like he's gone. How dare you ask for money? Blah blah blah, and gone and physically abused her. Mm -hmm. She's gone hospital. She's decided not to press charges for whatever reason. Uh, but it's it's not a good look. At the time of Kathleen's disappearance, Robert had actually been dating someone else for about three years, and they'd been sort of, God so they were damn. Kind of separated. It's kind of like half cheating, if you know what I mean. They were separated, and they were living in, because he had so many different apartments, obviously yeah. his family were in real estate, so uh -huh. that was no problem. She was living in one apartment, and he was dating this other woman in a different apartment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so they were separate, but, Maybe you could classify it as cheating. I don't know, but they were planning on getting a divorce anyways. Um, and something interesting is the fact that he had uh, initially offered up to a hundred thousand dollars to anybody that could find his missing wife. Yeah, that that makes sense. Yeah, you know, you do that. But as time went on, he ended up reducing that number down to fifteen thousand dollars. I think I bet people started looking. I bet that's what happened. I bet he was trying to figure out how to like keep people from like really figuring it out. You know what I mean? It had to be like what? Like what? What other reason do you have? Not, like that's so weird. Huh. Oh it's god! Weird. At first, it's showing. It's a not lot a of bit like, weird, my nigga. It's a weird. Wife, find my wife. A hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. And then as time goes on, you're like, yeah, we're gonna move that down to fifteen grand now. Very sus. It's like, does he really care that much? Or does he know? Oh. I tell you one thing, actually. Yeah. Okay, if he has murdered his wife here and he's got $100,000 yeah. reward out for it, he's thinking, right, she's not going to be found because she's dead. Yeah. Right? So why has he actually took, you know, why has he reduced it from yeah. $100,000 to $15,000? Because you just up it to make it seem because, more? Yeah, because you know that you've murdered her. She ain't going to be found. Hey, you know life. that $100,000 is not going to get cashed in by anyone. Yeah. Does it really... That's a bit strange. I know what you mean. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like, why even bother reducing? Unless he was worried that someone may find the body or right. something, then he That's still would true. lose it. But then he most likely also. Yeah, that is a prison. bit of a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. Strange one, yeah. Eight years later, he ends up divorcing her, and he cl he claims something called spousal. When people have all this money, you know what I've never understood? Like when they kill people, why don't they ever like think? You know what I'm saying? Because like. Immediately, my like, if I like started having these ideas, I'd be like, "Yo, I gotta buy a morgue, dog. Like, I gotta buy a crematory. If I buy a crematory, like, what are they gonna do? You know what I mean? Like, I, I'd, I'd just be so confused. Like, I'm, I'd be like, I'd be so lost. I'm like, where, like, where does the thought process like go? Whenever I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Abandonment because she was. You got all this money. Like, dead. Mm -hmm. He had to just say that he was abandoned by his spouse, and that's how they got the divorce through because there was no one there to like both and he, sign for it and i'm assuming he didn't have to give up the 200 yeah because she'd been a, she'd abandoned him yeah right with that being said in 2016 her family requested uh for her to be declared legally dead okay um and a request ah that sucks bro granted. the nypd quietly like a mouse yeah i like that yeah. reopened the case in 1999 Sneaky. Uh, uh, and then uh, what they did with it being reopened they ended up searching his residence in a place called south salem for the first time uh, and the investigation then went public november 2000 so prior to that it all been pretty low key and now people are interested you know, a lot of the time when these cases do end up going public, they get a lot more information. People end up saying, Hey, like, catch you later. I'll tell this or I saw this. Mm -hmm. I saw this person, 100%. whatever. Yeah. That's what, Jack, that's what I was literally sitting here trying to think, bro. I'm like, how are they not already searching? Like, that makes no sense to me. I'm so confused. Like, was it because there were so many residents or something? Or did somebody finally come forth with some type of evidence? Like, that makes no uh, sense, bro. Uh, once that happened, though, his sister, uh, Wendy, by the way, Again, a bit of a classical name. Yeah, it's like uh, Wendy's. 
from America. Fantastic food chain, that. Yeah. Must be so. Maybe Loved it says. Bacon, yeah. Tipped him off, saying that the investigation had been reopened. Yo, Robert, the investigation has been reopened. You need to get out of here. What you a crazy Wendy impression, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Robert, um, they've reopened the case. You need to get moving, lad. I wish I never said anything. Now, Robert <laughs> said, right, I'm on the move. I'm heading to Texas. All right, wonderful place Texas is. Um, but weirdly enough, he disguised himself. And this is not a joke. He did do this. He uh, disguised his, himself as a mute woman to avoid policing inquiries. Very smart. That's like that's like when you're in a that's like when you're in a foreign country. I would have done the exact same. And you just claim not to speak the language. Yeah. Oh well, I mean. Me no inglés. Yeah, me no inglés. Eh? Next up, Susan Berman. Okay, this was um, his best friend. You know, we spoke about her earlier. She was actually the daughter of a reputed gangster, David Berman. So you don't you don't want to be messing you with this family. This is not oh, something yeah. you want to mess with. But anyway, she was found murdered at her home in LA after a neighbors called the police to report that the back door was open and their three dogs were out loose. So obviously dogs cutting around mm -hmm. back garden. The dogs, bait, the dogs baited dogs out the baited dead body. Out. Robert yeah, because they were like, yo, that's not natural. Days before Susan was killed and is known to have flown back from San Francisco to New York the night before Susan's body was discovered. Okay. Now, he had also recently sent her two payments which add up to uh, $50,000, you know, okay. quite, quite the sum. Um, he admitted that when he was asked by LAPD. And in a biography by Kathy Scott, she claims that Robert killed her because she knew too much about his wife's disappearance. So oh. she had knowledge. Yeah. Wait, okay. what did he tell her something? First oh, because this was the lady he was Susan, dating, right? I was thinking, could this be gang related? You know, these gangsters, they always go after family members, things like that. It's sort of a known thing. And obviously with her dad being such a prominent figure in the oh. gang world, it's very possible that, you know, uh, rivals could have come in and be like, right, okay, yep. we're killing your daughter because of X, Y, Z. It's true, it's true. And the fact that Robert Durst was not in LA. He, so, you know, days before he was seen in San Francisco, which is a few, quite a few hours drive from LA. Mm -hmm. Instantly, police are probably thinking, well, it's probably got, not got anything to do with him. And the fact that he was actually in New York at the time of when the body was found, that really just throws police off. Like, you're probably never gonna be looking at him for being the person that did it, but what could have happened is because you can honestly drive from LA to San Francisco in hours. Yep. So it could have been a case of he killed Susan, instantly drives up to San Francisco, because if he flies out of LA, it maybe just seems a bit more bait. Whereas if he flies out of San Francisco, it looks like he was. It looks like he was in there for maybe, maybe in a little bit of business. Yeah, that's. that's he has he has more excuses to make, I guess. From one coast to another. Logistically, it is possible that yeah. he did this, but because of the tight uh, timelines, it would have to be pretty spot on, and the police wouldn't instantly jump to him as the person that did it. Because remember, Susan was his best friend. Yep. Right. So. Uh, was like, she, who's killing what, their best what, friend? Was she a loose end though? Right. Just because she's his best friend doesn't mean if she catches wind that he's killed his wife, yeah. that she ain't gonna speak up. Yeah. Okay. It, it's true. It's true. And he he could. That's what I mean. If it's not sort of gang related, yeah. which the police never mentioned that it was gang related, it just so happens to be that Susan's family is. She might be willing know. to. She wasn't gonna abide by the bro code. She yeah. was gonna snitch. She, yeah. She she could have snitched. Had to. On, on I wouldn't snitch on you. You wouldn't snitch on me. For real. Cap. For real. Cap. Yeah, if I kill someone, you're just keeping it hush. You never killed anyone, bro. I appreciate that, bro. Morris Black, Robert Durst's elderly neighbor, okay? Mm -hmm. October 9th, 2001, right? Durst was actually arrested. Why was he arrested? Because they found the elderly neighbor, Morris Black's body all chopped up. Yeah, they found it floating in a place called Galveston Bay. Ooh, upper coast of Texas, wow. Yeah. So yeah. that's so it's like another, diff, it's another complete different state again. It's like- yeah. it's, it's He's like just all, all over, over the place, place. dropping doing, bodies. Doing thing. Uh, and um, because remember, he relocated to Texas. So this is his elderly neighbor in Texas. Yes. When he was supposedly a mute. Yep. Right? So that's uh, three states, three different- Three brothers. different cases, right? Wow. Um, 
and he was then released on a $300,000 bail. Um, <coughs> he goes on to miss his court hearing, so they had a warrant out for his arrest uh, on charge of bail jumping, so yep. just when you don't turn up for yep, your court hearing. Uh, and then uh, in November the 30th, um, he was actually caught, this is not a joke, he was caught shoplifting for, here we go, Band-Aids, a newspaper, a chicken salad sandwich. Do you have $65 million? What? Which, can't knock him for that, they can be class. Um, BLT, although, so he did have, at the time, $500 cash in his pocket. Why is he shoplifting when he's got $500 in cash? And then not only that, but they searched his car and they found $37,000 in cash. Two oh, guns, he was on drugs. Marijuana. Got you. Morris Black's driver's license. Oh. oh, wow. So they got him. But yeah, he was on drugs. That's like, he, was, he had a problem. He was a klepto. Uh, he probably had a problem. Or I'm thinking he was just on drugs. He had to be on drugs. That's why he was trying to steal shit. And then here's, here's something nuts. They also found directions to Najami's house in Connecticut. Do you remember who Najami is? That no, was friend. Kathleen's, his wife's friend yep. from the dinner party. Yep. She Did was hosting the dinner party, right? I think she might have just been a friend at the dinner party. Either way, she, Either way. She, she, she was at this dinner party, right? Did she know, did Kathleen talk about something to Najami about He's obviously oh, so he was about to, he was about to go, that he needs he was to, about go to go to get her. House he was about to go get her. And do a number, and do yeah. a number on her. Yeah. But imagine that. Wow, what a find that that uh, car was. They yeah. got Morris Black's driving license, which is massive, definitely tying him to that, and probably the reason why they um, arrested him. Right? Um, just crazy to me. Yeah. Well, I mean. He must be an extreme cheapskate. You seen that show? Because this guy has had five hundred dollars in his packet uh, pocket, thirty-seven thousand dollars in the car, yeah. and which is thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. That's quick maths. And <laughs> <laughs> he's gone and nicked a chicken salad sandwich. What? You know what? That's how the rich stay rich. Chip. Yeah, it's I'm true. serious, the rich bro. Stay rich. This is why I'm slacking. This is why I'm running Seriously, But imagine, bro, he's done sort of all just... of this and he gets caught and arrested. For shoplifting, he must be fuming with himself. Yeah, this is 2001, and if I go back to earlier when I was talking about inflation and the numbers that I know, oh, no. <laughs> this is not too expensive, you know? <laughs> Marijuana, I definitely don't know the price of that, so I actually couldn't give you the numbers. <laughs> All right, Chip, we need, to, so we, need to, we need to move on because he was arrested and it's time to go to trial. The trial. 2003. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Damn. He was, thank you. He was tried for the murder of Morris Black. And uh, of course, he's going to claim self defense. Not the first time we've heard of this. Uh, his team actually hired a psychiatrist, uh, as Robert was actually pretty bad at communicating. Could be complete cat, but you know. Well, it, well, we got, we got to remember. Remember, he had that counselor when he was ten years old that said, yeah, "Okay, actually. look." I'm so a when he was ten years old, so ever since he was ten, they knew he was about to be out here doing some weird stuff. So you know, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm listening. Anyway, I'm they tried. <clears throat> sorry. Anyway, they tried to find out why. <laughs> sorry. Um, so he spent over seventy hours with this psychiatrist. They were examining, diagnosing him. Yeah. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. Eventually, they diagnosed him with Asperger's syndrome. Okay. Boom. Uh, and they used that to oh. explain his behavior at trial. Already, you can see they're trying Where to throw in, going? like, you know, we're already taking it down the medical route. He's got problems. He's got yeah. Taking it down that. the mental he's route. Yeah. He's a murderer, though. Hey, he might be smart. He might or get out for that. Because, Smart remember, he claims self-defense. Was it self-defense? This is the, the story. You can't murder three people on self-defense. That Morris Black grabbed... Robert's gun and started threatening him um, and during a little struggle a little tussle he ended up <laughs> shooting Morris Black in the face okay uh, he they go, what, he <laughs> what? Knife, right what? Uh, two saws and an axe to dismember <laughs> Morris Black's body but his head was never recovered <laughs> so there wasn't enough forensic evidence what? to show whether it was actually done oh on self-defense Right, and here's the crazy part, Chip, okay? Because of the lack of forensics, this meant that the jury acquitted oh Robert Durst God. of the murder on November the 11th, 2003. My Lord. Mate, we, we spoke about this, My right, when Lord. we went through this, okay? Let's just say it, there was a struggle. And you know what? He did have to shoot Morris Black in the face, okay? Let's in the habit. face, yep. chat. At what point is dismembering an entire body 
any form of self-defense. Yeah, like if you shot him in the face, the chances are he's definitely dead or he's at least 100% <laughs> paralyzed on the floor. Yeah, there is he's no not need attacking you. to whip out your little saw and go, right, safe measure here. I'm gonna clean cut this arm yeah. and this leg and the head. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh, now it now he's dead. Now I'm safe. I've just dismembered all his body parts, so I must yeah. be safe now. It's Cap. It, it, Cap. It, it, and I can't believe it, Cap. he's been acquitted. The jury he's fraud got away watch. With it. They should put us on jury watch or whatever it is. Jury. Do you, do you know what? Jury duty. If, if we had jury duty, I'd be sitting there. I'd be like, you not needed to hire the fella's detectives because we would have actually, they, they, this wouldn't have even gone to trial. I don't know why. I don't understand how they haven't like rethought out another system. I understand it's really hard to build things from the ground up. You know what I mean? But damn, man, there's got to be something that we could do because this whole jury thing is trash. I haven't even brought it up because I've been skipping jury duty. Wait, really? Yep. Would you not actually like quite like to do no, it? No, you get paid like nothing. Wait, it's not about the bag. You know, it's not <laughs> it's, like, no one goes in. Hey, oh, I've secured the bag. I'm doing jury duty. It's about it's about the bag. I do this 52 weeks a year. Okay. No, man, it's a, it's going there. And imagine you got a really sick case. Oh, that'd be the best. That would be, that'd be cool. Got a sick case like, right Like here. two week Let's deliberation type Tuesdays, shit. That's it. December 21st, 2004. He has pleaded guilty to two counts of bail jumping. Damn. And one count of evidence. Tell it all. He's been sent to, uh, sent to prison for five years, in which he actually only had to serve three. Okay. Now, in 2005, he was given parole and he was, you know, Five to years? Yeah. Ordered to stay near his home, should I say? And that December, he made an unauthorized trip to the place where Morris Black was actually killed. So he went to revisit the place. Yeah, which is quite mm. strange. That's, that, that, that makes you look a little bit guilty, a bit dodgy. Yeah. Is he, has, he, has he gone back there because he knows that they haven't found one last bit oh, of evidence? Yeah. He's gone back, quick ting. Oh, let me get rid of this. Anyway, obviously the parole officer, the police, it's, it's a violation of his parole. They've back sent, to jail, mate. Sent him back to jail and that's that. Uh, and he was released back from custody on March 1st, 2006. Oh, so he served the rest of it. Was born. So he served the rest of his, uh, <laughs> his time. There was a really crucial documentary that played a massive part in this whole thing, right? And it was an HBO documentary. It was Ooh. called The Jinx, The yeah. Life and Deaths of Robert Durst where Robert actually agreed to take part in this documentary. Uh, and it's a little bit was, like one of the, the case we did. Um, it sounds like another one of those things right, where he's on his deathbed. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. With um, Ian Bailey. Ian Bailey getting involved in the documentary, yeah. right? Well, uh, it, Robert Durst actually did this against the advice of his lawyers. His lawyer, because this is a terrible idea, by oh, the way. Oh, awful. Uh, his, his lawyers went, uh, Robert really wouldn't recommend this, but for whatever reason, Robert said, no, I'm getting involved in this documentary. And let me tell you guys, just like his lawyers said, it was a terrible idea. Because mm -hmm. as they were filming this documentary and they were interviewing Robert Durst, uh, as you guys will be able to, see, well, if you're watching this on YouTube or you're listening on Spotify, we have these little microphones attached to us right here. Uh, and let's say it's, and now this has actually happened. Chippo will wear the mic and he'll go to the bathroom, <laughs> and we can see BTS Alex behind the camera right now has a pair of headphones on. And when Chip goes to the bathroom, you can still hear everything. Right, Listen, it's still a microphone. When you go to the bathroom and you gotta go, you've had a coffee, you gotta squeeze it out. There's gonna be a couple. Yeah, and little... put it this way: the audio guys hear things that they sometimes shouldn't, and that was exactly the case here. Robert Durst went to the bathroom, and there is an audio clip of him talking to himself. Now we're gonna play a section of that. Oh, they got now. the clip. <laughs> Okay, that, okay, that just, that was kind of weird, but I don't know about that. Why the fuck was he moaning while he was taking his dick out? I'm confused. <laughs> that boy hit a crazy moan. He's like, oh. So what is it? He's just gone in there. He's just been waiting episode. to get this one out. Manic episode? No, well, he's, he's talking to somebody, himself. shit. Well, I mean, he's like, talking to he's somebody. Sometimes. Yeah, but like, that is, like, from he, that he clip, doesn't realize he's, really... that he's got the mic on. Well, for a start, that's piss poor, you know. He's an old bloke, <laughs> mate. You don't understand how it goes. Sometimes, I mean, you clearly forgot. I don't know why you're calling it piss poor. No, I, <laughs> no I, I didn't forget. I just don't mind the people yeah. listening to my grunts on the top. <laughs> you can hear he's sort of 
confesses to it, but it has to be said that in this particular uh, documentary, they actually came out and said, look, we did edit the audio to just make it sound a little bit more dramatic. So he said all those things, but they did chop and change it a little bit for it to be a little bit more dramatic. But he Oh no, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. They, if they edited it, I don't even care about it anymore. If they added anything, I don't care. Still don't essentially care. confesses to those murders. Yep. On there. Now, is he saying it sarcastically? That's I, for you guys to decide. I'm uh, pretty sure he wasn't. I don't think so. Nah, either. they well, edited this shit out. I don't even care what, what they said. Arrested by you can't believe friends, any of that shit uh, anymore. The, corner, the FBI. <laughs> March could 14th, you imagine, 2015. Could, could you imagine? He's done this documentary, and it's all come down to the fact that he forgot to take his mic off, and he's been nicked. Well, that's, that looks that like is. what's happened. He's been arrested in New Orleans, um, yeah. home of jazz music. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <I love. laughs> anyway, uh, everything they found, they found all the materials and all the money, they found it on him. They yeah. believed he was actually planning to flee to Cuba after the HBO documentary had aired, because obviously the US and Cuba have no extradition treaty, so if he goes to Cuba, can US there. can't nick him, they can't yeah. get him over. Fair enough. The state police, ended up uh, charging him with uh, two counts of possession of a firearm. Uh, and then uh, on April the 8th, uh, Robert was formally indicted by the Louisiana grand jury Damn. for carrying a weapon with a controlled substance, Ooh. right? And then also as well uh, for the- hey, he has some more dope on him? Firearm by a felon. Um, now, look, it's, it's not looking great for Robert at this mm -hmm. point because uh, his defense attorney confirmed that Robert was in fact in poor health, suffering from something called hydrocephalus. Uh, uh, cephalus, yeah. The man, look at honey. To do with Jesus. Spinal fluid, I think. Yes, so it's an accumulation of so cerebral spinal fluid. Oh, I hate it when you accumulate so much cerebral spinal fluid. <laughs> I, it, it wasn't great for him, that's for sure. Uh, and yeah, look, he wasn't in great health. He had quite a bit of stuff um, done to him. He had to have some cancerous uh, stuff removed from his esophagus. So when it came to speaking, it was all just a bit peak for Robert, okay? Uh, there was a lot of faffing around, negotiations, delays. Um, and on February 3rd, 2016, Robert actually pleaded guilty to those gun charges and received around seven years of Damn. Time in prison. I mean, look, he's still not being done. We still got those two other murders, right? He ain't been done for those. Yeah, I mean, this I mean, is just got, for we, the gun we charge. We got stuff coming. We got stuff yeah. away, surely. He was slapped into a maximum security prison, uh, but then he was transferred to LA County Jail. So he's getting caught for everything besides trial. murder, it, it seems like. Hearing, everything. And the judge ruled that there was not actually enough evidence to try Robert for the murder of his best friend, Susan Berman. So Robert, obviously... This man is already in a wheelchair. Bro, leave this nigga alone. Leave him alone, bro. You didn't get him. You didn't get him. It's over. I feel like at a certain point, they just got to let it go. You got to let it go. Got to let it go, bro. He pleaded not guilty. In January 2019, the judge set Robert's trial. This nigga is smiling. Oh, no, nah, they got to kill him. This nigga's a demon. <laughs> they got to kill him. He's a demon. Date was <laughs> September 3rd, 2019. He's a and demon. In this trial, he ruled that prosecutors <laughs> could present evidence um involving morris black's murder um as they were trying to connect that murder to the disappearance <laughs> what? of kathleen is that a mask because they believed that that was the foundation so they... like the fact her disappearance was the foundation for the motive of morris black's murder okay you know, got you so yeah. th so they didn't they had they obviously didn't have enough evidence for susan uh berman so that i guess they just decided right we're just gonna have to go all in on these other two uh, thing, yeah, which to is try and get using the the murder of Morris Black to connect the dots. Oh, yeah, well they and knew try, they and try and get yeah. this Kathleen thing. Well, they well. knew he was guilty, but yeah. they just didn't have certain evidence for certain cases. Pain. So they tied the other cases together, and they're like, "We're getting this guy." Well, in March second, twenty twenty, it's getting awful close to us at this point, right? Uh, Robert uh, appeared in court to start his trial which was uh, bound to take several months. I mean, this is a big trial, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, as we all know, in 2020, COVID-19 came knocking. And of course, with that, there was a lot of delays. Um, and this case was one of them. Um, yeah. it was that still blows my mind. May 17th, 2021. This year, guys. Oh my God. Ago, yeah. Right? 
This um, is still going now, on. There was, a bit, there was a lot of fighting matches between lawyers. A member of the jury actually was sent home for breaking court instructions. You're not supposed to follow the news. Yes. And, and because get it can sway your opinion. Yeah, it can yeah. sway your opinion, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And and so what they did was there was a real sort of cloud surrounding the whole thing, whether, you know, are these jurors actually neutral? Yeah. Or is this going to be a are fair the, trial? Are they fair? Uh, yeah, fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they fit for the Oh, job. wow. Yeah. So here we go again um, with the jury. Months, here we go again uh, with the jury, bro. It, it, here we it, go. Because it was all because of these delays. Mm -hmm. And then with these delays meant that they could go home. They could read stuff about the case. Yeah. So there was just real question marks about the jurors, okay? Now, Robert was actually hospitalized on June 10th, <laughs> 2021. But uh, many actually believe that he was faking a medical crisis to try and they force... They said cap. Yeah, they, he was trying to force a little bit of a mistrial. You okay. Know? Yeah, he's saying, oh, look at me, I'm ill. Not ill. Um, uh, actually, though, the jail doctor determined him to be fit to appear in court, but he did turn up unable to dress himself. He was wearing like blankets. He was in a wheelchair. We've got some pictures. Jail you guys uniform. Will be able to see on yeah, as, as you can well. see on screen. Oh he my god! Like he's trying to show himself. Like Cal said, Horrible. Could be a bit of cappuccino. Yeah, I'm. Th I'm thinking some serious. That's his cappuccino lawyers definitely because, told him to do what? that. His lawyers uh, definitely we, told him to do that. The sort of like defense and things will do. We'll try and make their um, client look as weak, as frail as possible to almost make the jurors feel bad. Yeah, to make yeah. them care like, for him a little bit more. He's going to die anyways. Mm -hmm take it easy on him. So they've, they've dressed him in this blanket. He's got the mask on, obviously like COVID, but he does not look great by it <laughs> at all. Robert Durst was then put on the stand for 14 days. Two weeks, this man was on the stand and he was questioned intensely by the LA County Deputy DA. Um, and there were loads of examples and points of Robert's tendency just to lie. Um, and he cornered him to the, to the point where Robert actually had to admit that he lied in the Morris Black trial, um, the, the previous one that he did, um, and that he actually lied five times in that trial. Uh, and what? I'm sorry, but if you get caught doing Lying that, under it off, just, you are, it writes you off completely. You are finished. It, yeah, it, it, and it was because on September the 17th, 2021 and at the time they got that man out of there a matter of weeks ago yes he's 28th today yeah 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 so, uh, he was uh, the jury convicted robert of first degree murder in the death of susan berman right so they actually got him on the susan berman yep, one they got him okay and he was also found guilty of, of multiple special circumstance charges which resulted in a life sentence prison with no parole yeah uh, oh he's man old, so he's done like, anyway if i do the numbers he's not short of 80. damn you, you're doing hella numbers in this case <laughs> I appreciate that. so uh the final thing on this is that you know the latest uh, at the time that we're doing this is on september 24th literally four days ago yeah uh the lawyers filed a motion to request a new trial i guess they'll be saying that it was an unfair trial yeah. xyz uh, it's not looking great for Robert. No, nope. not he's only is he old and having a medical crisis, as he claims, yeah. it's looking like he's going down. So, Chip, uh, in terms of our own thoughts on this, we always like to add our own twist, and we'd love to hear what you guys think. For me, guys, um, is this a man who was just really unlucky to have all these people so close to him go missing and die? Or do you think it's connected? What's your theory? I think he's a baddie. I think he's a bad guy. Yeah. yeah. I think he's a baddie. He's been rumbled. What? Morris Black's ID in the boot of his car yeah. with 35 grand. The guy's, you know, he's all over the shop. Yeah. He's making rookie errors. He's gone back to the place where Morris Black was killed right. um, whilst he's meant to be on parole. There's just too much stuff that is dodgy. It looks dodgy. They've got him for Susan Berman as well. Yeah, I think, and I, we both discussed this earlier as well, is what happened was... Um, it sounds like he did something to his wife, Kathleen. Yep. Something bad, right? They unfortunately have not found the body for that, uh, but he's done something bad there. And then he's ended up having going to, finding out that other people maybe know a little bit too much. He's then had to go and kill certain people because they know too much. But by doing I want to know who he killed that they don't even know that is there. About, about him killing Susan. And he's having to constantly chase these loose ends about people knowing too much stuff and it's just got out of control and he's been found out and i just i, I find it just so kind of just funny and ironic that the yeah. fact that's why you got to do your own dirt chat always do your dirt by yourself microphone 
on a documentary that he ended up doing despite his lawyers telling him it will be a terrible idea. Yeah, well, this guy makes mistakes, you know. He got caught. He does. He's he got he's caught not... nicking a chicken salad sandwich. First of all, I hate salad, so I can't back it. <laughs> you can't back it. Anyways, that is going to be today's Fellas Mysteries. Let yes. us know, what do you think about this case? Do you think that this man was just really unfortunate and the people closest to him were just dying for whatever reason? Yeah. Let us know. Yes, and of course, the Fellas Mysteries is available on all audio platforms. So if you want to go ahead and listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, listen to it everywhere, chat. It's in the description. Uh, here's a, with a follow on there, right? Yeah, here's yeah. a follow there, please, guys. And if you are listening on Apple uh, Podcast, then do leave us a five star rating and a funny review. We'll read some of them out and we'll put them on our Instagram as well. Yes, thank you guys for watching, and we will see you next Monday. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. I love it, man. Oh, I love it. Oh, man. They just keep getting better and better with these, for sure. I love how, like, their energy together, too, is getting better. It's just great. All around, all around. Definitely a vibe, man. If you guys haven't already uh, checked out the homies, man, make sure you guys go over there ASAP, man. First link in the description. Also, we're live every day, man. If you guys watch this video, make sure you come hop in the stream. Say... Blah, blah. I'm here. And that's how I know you're coming from the video. I love you. Big peace.